I'm going to show you how to make the single hooping line stocking from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser and it's very important that you do use wash away stabiliser and the fabric kind, not the plasticky sort. Some masking tape, a selection of scissors, a selection of threads, some pins, my fabrics and batting cut to size, I've got a little piece of ribbon to make the hanger and because I'm going to use um, a fur fabric for the cuff I've also got a piece of wash away solvy topper there as well. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well. You're going to start off by hooping your two layers of wash away stabiliser so place it over the outside hoop frame and then insert the inside one on top. We're now going to pin around the top edge of our frame to stop our stabiliser from being pulled down between the two hoop pieces. So take your pin, rest it on top of the inside hoop push it through the stabiliser, bring it back round and back through the stabiliser again and that's going to anchor it and you're going to do that on all four sides. Load your neutral thread into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for the stocking. I'm going to be using a, a darker thread for this so that you can see what I'm doing. There's more than one version of this design and today I'm going to do the pet version because I'm sure all of us with pets are going to be waiting for Santa Paws to come when the time's right. The first fabric that we're going to position is our front lining and this is going to go on the back of our hoop so turn your hoop over it, we're going to place it face down so that this edge here comes a quarter of an inch below this stitch line here and we want to position it so that once it's stitched in place eventually when we flip this down it's going to cover the whole of the outline of the stocking. So once you've positioned it we're going to tape that in place then turn your hoop over and roll your fabric up and um, we're going to just attach it temporarily with a clip or a pin to the stabiliser just to keep it under control and stop it from getting in our way and I've just put a couple of clips on there. Next we're going to add our cuff fabric and we're going to do it in exactly the same way. Now eventually, I'm using a bit of faux fur here, eventually this is going to be this way up. So I want the pile to be running from top to bottom. So I'm going to, I've got it the right way around at the moment, I'm going to flip that up and place it in, pl in place upside down as I did for the lining fabric. Now if you've got a pile to your fabric you risk it getting in your way later on so if you add a piece of Solvi topper which is the clear plasticky type water soluble stabiliser at the same time underneath your, uh, your cuff then it's going to keep all the pile out of your way and you'll see why later on. So I'm going to place that over the top on top of my Solvi and tape it in place. 
now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure those fabrics and solve it if you're using it in place. I'm going to take my tape off and explain how everything works so that it all makes perfect sense to you. So starting with the cuff fabric eventually this is going to fold down and be stitched into place and my solvy topper will come down over the top and this will hold all the pile out of the way of this gap now when you attach your backing fabric it's going to attach along this top stitch line here and leave a gap and that gap is most important because we're going to need it in order to turn the stocking out the right way so that will keep all the pile out of the way of that gap I'm just going to turn this over a second and explain the back as well so taking the tape off of the back and the clips of course my lining fabric for the front will come down like this and if you imagine putting your hand down inside your stocking here this will be the lining that goes to the front and then you will have another lining on this side for the back and your hand would slide down between the two so you want this fabric to cover the whole of this outline eventually and of course you will still have the gap at the top here too so I'm going to put that back we're now going to add our batting for the front so place your batting up to this stitch line here making sure of course that it covers the rest of the stocking and then you're going to tape it in place I'm using a very thin batting for this you're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure your batting in place We're now going to trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line so you can remove your tape and trim away taking care not to cut the stitching of course we're now going to bring our cuff down and you want to be quite firm when you pull this down because we've got to leave a gap here between the fabric and the top stitch line so make sure that you pull it firmly and then tape it in place and if you've got a pile like I have bring your and you've used solvy bring that down over the top and make sure that that is firm as well and that's going to control all the, the the fluffy bits and keep them free of this gap and then tape that in place as well pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four and that's going to secure your fabric for the cuff in place I'm just going to trim off this solve here a little bit and I want to show you this gap here next we're going to add our front fabric for the stocking and again we're going to do this 
so that the wrong side of the fabric is facing up and this edge of your fabric is this side of the stitch line that you've just created when you stitched your cuff down and make sure of course that it's going to come past the toe as well so when you're happy tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round from number five and that's going to secure it to the hoop now that our fabric is secured we're going to trim up the excess fabric here just leaving about quarter of an inch we can now bring this fabric down and secure it in place and I'm going to add a little bit of tape here because there's quite a bit of excess fabric there so I'll just keep that nice and flat pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to secure this fabric in place so that's our fabric all secured in place next is the quilting so load your thread colour for that into your machine I'm using monofilament so there's no colour but you see the quilting and then stitch round number seven the next colour that we're going to stitch is round number eight and that's going to give us our placement outline for the paw print fabric so I've loaded a darker thread colour into my machine so that you can see what I'm doing but you can load whichever colour you're going to be using for the satin stitching around the edge of it so once you've loaded your colour you're then going to stitch round number eight place your fabric for the paw print over the placement outline and tape it in place pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number nine to secure it remove the tape and then we're going to trim up the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line there and you want to cut close to the stitching without cutting it is the satin stitching around the paw and the paw detail so load whichever colour thread you want for that into your machine and stitch round number 10 I'm going to show you how to personalise your stocking using built-in machine fonts now every machine is going to be different but I'm going to show you on my brother Anovis V3 you can look it up in your user manual for your machine or find a, a video on YouTube on how to do it on yours but I think generally they are pretty much the same and if nothing else you're going to at least learn how to line up your needle to get it exactly where you want it so first off you need to take note of where you are in the stitch sequence of the stocking and we're at number 11 because we're going to need to come back to that later then we're going to come out of the file completely so I'm going to just press close return OK and then we're going to go into our built-in fonts and for mine it's here where there's two A's so I'm going to press that and then I need to select a font now for doing this I want something pretty small nothing too bulky and um, you want to make sure that 
your name is actually going to fit in the area where you want to put it and you can place it anywhere you like on the stocking once I've shown you how to align it to wherever you want it. So I'm going to be putting mine on the cuff so I think I'm going to go for something really simple like this one and the size I want is going to be small so so I'm going to put my name in which is baggy for my cat so B and here it gives my um, font size now and I can go down to small and then I can put the rest of the letters in I'm going to go to the lowercase letters A and where's G? G, G and the Y so that's the name already and then all I need to do now is press embroidery and that will send it through ready to be stitched so that brings it up in my embroidery panel now I'm going to swap over to my other camera so I can show you how to prepare your stocking for the lining up the stitching okay so I've got a ruler a pencil and a piece of masking tape I think I could write a book on how to use masking tape. <laughs> okay, so place your masking tape where you want your um, stitching for your name to go. And I'm going to place mine in the center of the cuff. And then you're going to work out where the dead center is for your needle. So I'm going to just put a cross, I'll turn this around a little bit. I want it to be in the, the very centre of the cuff here so I'm going to place my ruler in the top corner here and just draw a line and I'm going to do the same on the opposite diagonal so from here to here so now when I align my needle to stitch out the name I'm going to make sure that it sits right in the middle of that cross and then I know when it stitches the name it's going to be central. We're going to be removing the masking tape before we actually do any stitching so that's not going to be in our way. So I'm going to load my hoop into my machine and then center my needle to the uh, um, cross here and for that I'll be using the controls on my embroidery machine. Okay so back to my panel these arrows here are going to control the direction of where I position the needle so left right up and down and I'm going to move, use those to move the needle until it's central to my cross so here we go so that's the up button and then I want to bring it across slightly maybe down a little bit and then I'm going to drop the needle so push the button on your machine that's got a needle and as you can see it's close but not close enough so I'm now going to raise the needle again I'm just going to remove that from there and I can now move it across a little bit and maybe up and then I'm going to do the same drop the needle and I think that's about as perfect as I'm going to get it <laughs> okay so I'm now going to raise the needle up so once you're happy with the position of your needle remove your hoop and then remove the masking tape then pop your hoop back in 
and then you can stitch your name. So what if we wanted to stitch our name in metallic thread to make it nice and sparkly? Well, I'll show you how to go about that and a few simple rules to follow in order to get a smooth stitch out. First off you want to use a 9014 needle. It's a top stitch needle because it's got a slightly larger eye and the thread can travel through unhindered. You also need to make sure that your thread rather than coming off of the spool like this and twisting as it comes off comes off this way round so that it pulls off straight then it's not going to cause any kinks in it that's going to get caught up in the eye of your needle. You can make a really really simple basic thread stand for it to do that using a plastic beaker, a pencil and three elastic bands and all you need to do is chain these together turn your beaker over, place the middle band over the bottom of the cup so that it now has ears. Remove any thread nets from your uh, um, thread, place your pencil through and then just pop the ears of your bands over the pencil. Now if you put this on the right hand side of your machine, pull your thread up and run it through the two pieces uh, that form the spool, uh, uh, the uh, bobbin um, winder and then thread as normal, you will find that it will come off really easily. And when I position my beaker, I just turn it very slightly so that when the thread comes up towards this end it doesn't jump off onto the pencil, snag and break the needle. Another thing you'll want to do is slow your machine right down as slow as it will go. Um, I've put mine to 350 stitches per minute and you also want to slacken off your top tension Mine's set on zero normally, so I've uh, taken it down to minus two. I'm now going to thread my machine and we're going to stitch the name. We're now going to get back to loading the design into our machine again. I've loaded the stocking design back into my machine and we now need to pick up where we left off from. So I'm going to, as you can see we're on, on zero here and we want to get to uh, colour number 11. So here I've got a needle with a plus and a minus and generally that's um, the uh, indication for skipping through colours and um, uh, stitches. So I'm going to touch that and it brings up this panel and I've got two cotton reels here, a plus and a minus, and needles with numbers on them. Now the, the needles with numbers are for skipping through stitches and the cotton reel looking ones are for, stip, uh, excuse me, for skipping through colours. So I'm going to press the cotton reel with the plus until I arrive at colour number 11. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And the needle with the plus 
we'll just bring my embroidery arm to the start of that colour so I'm going to press that as well for good measure. You're now going to unclip your lining fabric, front lining fabric from the back, turn it over and then pull your fabric down and again you want to pull it nice and taut so that you keep this area here with the gap and then tape it in place. Next I want to add a little hanger so get your uh, ribbon or whatever you're going to be using position it in place and you want to keep it away from that stitch line there but you want it to be caught when we add the backing fabric on the front next so I'm going to move that over just a little bit and tape it in place I'll put a little bit of tape up there and just a little bit to hold it on the end here as well then take your backing fabric and you're going to place that face down over the whole of the outline and if you wanted to add any batting as well then you can add that to the top and I'm going to do that now I've got a few off cuts that are worthy of using so I'm just going to line them up and then tape everything in place and that should come just over the toe there Okay, and I'm now going to tape that in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 11. And that's going to secure the top first. And then we'll have a look and if you're happy with that, then we'll do number 12 and that will secure the rest. So here we go with round number 11. I've just removed the tape from the bottom here and I'm just going to lift this up so that you can see there's the gap, the all important gap. I know I keep repeating it but it is really important. So we're now going to place this all back in place, tape it down and stitch round number 12 and that's going to secure the rest. I've just removed the tape and I'm going to trim up the edge of around the edge of the stitch line to remove the excess batting. We're now going to add the lining for our backing. So turn your hoop over and you're going to place your backing fa uh, back lining fabric face down so right side down onto the hoop and cover the whole of the outline and then tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 13 and that's going to stitch nearly all the way round and just leave a gap for us to turn it. So that's all the stitching of our stocking finished now. So remove all your tape and pins from your hoop and then free your work. And we're now going to trim up around the edge and we're going to leave a quarter of an inch all the way around and I'm going to do this from the back because it's easier to see 
and where we've got the gap to turn our work I'm just going to cut down here just so that it's easier to to turn afterwards so trim down and again you, you, you leave your quarter of an inch here as well just going to trim a little bit of this excess off because it is rather excessive okay And then on the corners, we're just going to cut them across here and here, taking care not to cut too close to the stitching, of course. And then wherever there's a curve, we're going to clip the fabric towards the stitch line. And that's going to enable us when we turn it to get a really nice, neat seam. We're now going to turn this out the right way. So we're going to turn it uh, where our two lining fabrics are. Push all your seams right the way out. Okay, now this is this reveals our stabilizer gap that we were so preciously guarding, and we're going to wet that in a minute and it's going to magically open everything up. But before we do, we need to make sure that we stitch this piece up here. So I'm going to tuck that in. And just hand stitch that closed. So I've attached my needle and thread, and I'm just going to over stitch, whip stitch, ladder stitch, do whatever you like, just go over and over just to close up that gap. And because this is inside, it's not going to be seen. So now that that's stitched up, we're now going to open this and turn it for the last time. So take some warm water and a cotton bud, dip it in and just wipe it along that magic gap. Okay. 
and we can now turn this out the right way completely. And the other thing that we're going to do is remove the, the wash away stabilizer that we've got on the front here over the um, cuff. I've given this a light pressing with a pressing cloth so that all the seams and sit, everything sits beautifully and I think we can call that finished. I'm sure Baggy will be delighted when Santa Paws comes. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's always lots of help, ideas and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well.